If you want to support the platform, just in case anything like this happens again, you can do it by way of PayPal, Patreon, uh, Cash App, and also by um, the Anchor. And you can also further support the platform by way of going to the uh, the Teespring store or um, the shoe store that is located in the comment section below. Now, I just need somebody to explain to me, how is this a kid's birthday party? How is it that you have individuals, right, in costume that are dancing to music and they decide that instead of just being the characters that they're supposed to be, they decided that, hey, we're going to start twerking in front of kids. We're going to start twerking like we're on Magic City, like we're on some corner somewhere. Like we're in a club somewhere, like we're at somebody's uh, dining restaurant somewhere. We're going to start twerking like we're at the Waffle House somewhere. And it's not like they're doing it just because there's, you know, just solely adults there. They're doing this and there's kids there. You clearly saw, you know, a little girl, you know, run, run past and, you know, go to the other side. You can clearly see other adults there holding kids or kids directly to the size of the adults. What are we doing here? What are we doing here? And people get mad when I critique and when it is that I say certain things. This is why I sat up there and told y'all that I'm just going to use the video evidence that I have. So if you want to come against me, make sure you come at the adults that are there. More so specifically, make sure you come at the black woman that's there that's holding their kids, allowing them to basically view that. Some of them have their daughters there and they're allowing them to watch this take place. So then because they see that their mothers are okay with it, and they're allowing them to sit up there and watch it. And then they're viewing those, right, individuals twerking and showing themselves off in that way. They're then going to, all of that is reinforcing and stating to that little girl, like, oh, okay, this is this is okay. So, you know, when I get to a certain age and I start dancing, and, you know, all this other type of stuff, like, this is how I'm going to get attention. This is, you know, what's, what's cool to do because it's okay because my mom is right here next to me. She ain't saying nothing, so it must be okay. I can't list to you how many times that I've been to black parties or birthday parties or gatherings. And what would happen is that you would have the music directly come on and you would start seeing the women dancing. And usually the women there would also have kids, babies, all this other type of stuff. And once the women start dancing, the mothers start dancing, then you will see some of the little daughters copying the mothers doing the exact same things. You will see some of the older daughters who might be eight, nine, 10 doing the same things. You will see some of the other daughters that might be 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 doing the same thing. And the thing that I've always stated to black women is that if you like this, you always stated that you had a problem with black men objectifying, right? Back during the, uh, the 90s or whatever, I'm sorry, the early 2000s when it was uh, what Nelly's tip drill, right? Black women all over had a problem with it. Black women all over had a problem with it. Even though the women that were there, more than likely or not, exotic dancers, right? Strippers, right? So they were completely, in a sense, fine with it, Right? Because, in a sense, they signed up to be a part of this video. They more than likely knew what it was going to entail. Because when you look at it, there's two different videos. You have the normal video that they played during the day. And then they had BT Uncut, where they played Nilly Tip Drill. And it was an unedited version where the women were naked and all that other type of stuff. Like I said, there's two different versions. So nobody's going to tell me that the women did not know what they were signing up for, what they were going to specifically do. Some women will opt in. Some women will opt out. Right. So black women had an issue, had a problem with that whole thing. So then now you have later on where you have all of these different movements going on. And now you have black women saying, oh, we're taking back the power. We're taking back our sexuality. We're taking back ownership of our bodies and all this other type of stuff. Right. So black men objectifying wrong. No problem. Agreed. Cool. 
Black women objectifying themselves in the exact same manner is completely right and is completely okay. I, from my standpoint, right, I would feel that if one wrong, if one thing is wrong, then the other thing should be wrong directly as well. But like I said, I'm not a woman. I'm just looking at it from my perspective as a guy, right? If a guy sits up there and takes the life of a woman, it's wrong. Right. I'm pretty sure we can all agree on that. If a woman takes the life of another woman, that should also be wrong as well. But in some weird way, people will try to differentiate and say that there are different reasons on how it is that this one is more wronger than the other one. Not saying that both are wrong, not saying that both are right, but the, the, the thing that the men are doing is more wronger than what it is that women are doing because women are doing it because they learned it from it. It's like it's, it's it doesn't make sense. That's all I'm saying. A lot of this, it just does not make sense. Somebody being hypersexualized, overly sexualized, uh, somebody being objectified and treated in a certain type of way that others would deem as being dehumanizing, I would feel that nobody right at a certain point would want to take part in those type of actions, especially the ones complaining, which would be women. Because women will tell you that, hey, we've been objectified. We've been treated like cattle. We've been treated like property. We've been, you know, uh, told this and treated like that and all these other types of things. But yet continuously, every single time that I get on social media, I run into videos like this. I run into examples like this. And when I showcase these examples, all that happens is people want to push back and they want to reinforce the negativity that is clear cut on display, which is not only negative for the community it's not only negative for the adults but it's negative for the future because the future is going to be one that's going to be the most impacted by every single thing that the adults are doing right now and the future is going to be the one that's going to take care of us when it comes time for them to take care of us they're going to be at a point in time that they're not going to care they'll be like well y'all didn't really care about us when we was growing up in xyz and yada 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 so there i promise you was going to end up happening is that if a lot of these young kids who feel a certain type of way of about uh, about adults, they start getting into these different systems where they got to oversee us, we're not going to have any type of protection. Because at this moment in time, we're not doing anything at all to protect these kids. We're just letting them run loose and do whatever it is that they want to sit up there and do. When realistically, a lot of these kids are out here crying for help so that they don't end up not caring in the end. But due to the fact of everybody just wants to worry about themselves, everybody wants to live their life, everybody wants to be promiscuous and they want to be with this person and that person, all this other type of stuff. Nobody really wants to try to get married. Nobody really wants to try to be in a relationship. Nobody really is trying to do a nuclear family. This is why we, as the generation that we are part of, are going to suffer in the end. Like I said, our parents are completely fine because they got us. Our grandparents were completely fine because they had our parents and then before them, before them. Now, I don't know what to sit up there and tell you. It's, it's, a, it's a dark area and there's not no light that you can give me that is going to be able to shine on whatever road or whatever it is that we're walking on at this moment in time. We don't know what's in front of us. We don't know what's two to five feet in front of us at this moment in time. That's how dark it is. Even if the sun is out, you still ain't seeing it. But like I said before, you know, everybody reaps what they sow. And even if people didn't have a part of it, you know, it is what it is. Because we're part of the generation that realistically don't care about the kids and the outcome of these kids. We're going to have to suffer by way of uh, the negative impact that we gave to them. And then they're going to return that by the way that they sit up there and treat us. We start getting into our 60s, our 70s, our 80s. It ain't going to be the same. They ain't going to have the respect for us like we used to have for people in the 90s and 80s and the, and the 60s and the 70s. It's not going to be like that. 